Hello, and welcome to another edition of Door County Today. I'm your host, Paul Renier of Door County Nature and Travel. The Peninsula Music Festival is celebrating its 60th anniversary of world-class symphonic concerts in Door County. The schedule features three weeks of August concerts with conductor Victor Jampolski. We'll explore how and why the Peninsula Music Festival continues to thrive as a nonprofit arts organization while it grows artistically. Later, we'll take a walking tour of classic inns and resorts of Door County, each offering a distinctly different lodging experience for your Door County visit. Later, we'll go to Door Shakespeare, whose outdoor theatrical performances of Bjork London in Bailey's Harbor continue to draw rave reviews. Finally, in honor of Sister Bay's centennial, we'll take a trip down memory lane with the 1940s and 50s era film footage of this important Northern Door community. Now, let's start this month's show with a visit to the Peninsula Music Festival. When you look through the, the people who were involved in the early days of this festival, it's a who's who of the classical world in the 50s and 60s. Frederick Stock was with the Chicago Symphony, and he had the idea, and I think talked to a lot of the same people who ended up founding it. He originally wanted to actually um, have the orchestra perform outside. Um, we were founded by a gentleman named Lawrence Heise. He was a businessman from Milwaukee who um, was a devout Moravian, and many people don't realize that the Peninsula Music Festival has its roots in the traditions of music in the Moravian Church. And he attended the very first early Moravian music festival, and he met a conductor named Thor Johnson who founded that festival. And he asked Thor Johnson if he would come to Wisconsin and create a festival similar to that here in Door County. So Thor Johnson came here and met with what they called the Festival Committee. And he said that he would start the festival here if they raised $10,000. We jokingly say that once they all picked themselves up off the floor um, from the shock, they decided to do it. And they did. It never crossed anybody's mind that you couldn't have a world-class professional symphony orchestra in Door County, Wisconsin. Thor Johnson just went and picked people and told them you will come here and play in the orchestra. And they just did it because you didn't say no to Thor Johnson in those days, from what I've told. And they received a paycheck of $100. For the first uh, 39 years, they sat on folding chairs in a school gymnasium that has a built-in stage. The place was actually not very suitable for the concerts because the stage was uh, extremely small and because the uh, seats were on folding chairs and so people were uncomfortable sitting there and plus there were only 500 seats available in the hall. When we had a pianist playing with orchestra we had to build up the front, especially to put a piano on something. And some of the percussion instruments were not on stage, they were in the wings somewhere. <laughs> Thanks to the generosity of um, the Hislop sisters, we got this beautiful auditorium and 21 years ago we moved in here. The sound carries really nicely and it, it's an easy place to play. Even when it fills up, and usually, you know, some that gets a bit muffled in some other halls, but here it just still carries really nicely. This hall is built perfect. The acoustics here are flawless. You will be amazed. I just really like this auditorium a lot. The, the size, the feeling of it, it, even the look of it. It's um, not a huge space, so it's a little more intimate. The acoustic is beautiful here, which was not the case in gymnasium. So. It, it was really wonderful, almost like a surprise for us when uh, some lady decided to make a large donation to build uh, Door County Auditorium, which is already almost like a 20 years old. Thor Johnson um, died quite suddenly in um, the early 70s of a brain tumor. He was only in his 60s, and the festival suffered from founder syndrome for about 10 years while they, with guest conductors, um, interim people, while they tried to figure out what to do. Um, luckily, Bob Marcellus, who was the principal clarinetist of the Cleveland Orchestra, took over the search. There were a series of people who auditioned, but Victor, I think, was one of his choices, and he really brought Victor here. This will be Victor's 27th 
season with the Peninsula Music Festival. People who haven't seen an orchestra or this orchestra before I think would be surprised at the high level of the group. Victor has brought in wonderful musicians uh, and you know they've clearly elevated the level of the orchestra and we play up to that you know every every other day is a new concert. You can imagine that it is the hardest thing for us to present nine concerts in three weeks and make it so varied and interesting. It is not an easy three weeks, but what uh, many of the musicians say, it's some of their best music making of the whole year. It's much more than a gig, and I think if you asked that of anybody in the orchestra, they'd say the same thing. Um, being here as long as I have, it really is a family. I love coming here, not only for Door County, because it's beautiful, but the orchestra is so rewarding from the conductor, who's fabulous, to the fellow musicians, and love it. It's my favorite time. The festival runs August 7th through the 25th, and we perform every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for three weeks, nine different concerts with no repeats. Well, if you've never heard a classical music concert before, come hear us, because it's a spectacular orchestra, and you'll get a feeling for classical music that you wouldn't in any other venue. And the idea of a world-class symphony here, it's, it's kind of crazy, and that's what makes it fun. Classic Inns and Resorts of Door County was something that we as a group uh, throughout the county started about, I suppose it's been 15 years ago now, and there's six of us that are involved in this. My wife Bonnie and I started White Lace Inn in 1982. What we have here is because we have 18 rooms that are spread out over four houses, which are ostensibly right next door to each other though, as we have a central backyard with a gazebo, lots of gardens and that sort of thing, and a pathway. We have 18 rooms, but there are four rooms, six rooms, four rooms, and four rooms. A lot of times folks hardly realize anyone else is here. And we have a wonderful, very quiet backyard. Folks can come and, and uh, we really do get some folks who come and spend a lot of their time just parking themselves in the backyard in a uh, Adirondack chair or a bench back there or in the gazebo reading a book. Our rooms are not very basic. They're, they're pretty upper end although some of the garden house rooms are pretty simple bathrooms, but most of our rooms are, are not exactly what you'd call simple or basic rooms. The main building was built in 1907 by Dr. Sebald Fickner. It was one of the first buildings in Sister Bay. We're located on 27 wooded acres and we have 1,100 feet of shoreline on the waters of Green Bay. It became more of the resort type property as we know it in the 1980s, which includes 46 rooms and suites, outdoor swimming pool, outdoor whirlpool. We have a dock down at the water's edge, tennis, lots of activities for our guests to enjoy while they are here on property. We have lots of discriminating dogs who bring their owners and stay with us. We have designated dog-friendly rooms and with the nature trails and shoreline, there's lots of property that you can enjoy with your dog. The Country House caters primarily to um, an adult clientele. It does provide a very unique atmosphere, a much more quiet, relaxed type atmosphere. Two of our buildings are on the National Register of Historic Places, namely the Zahn House, which is the original inn and goes back to 1904 when August Zahn arrived from Germany. He was a young blacksmith. The walls are made of uh, stacked stove wood mortared into place with, with lime mortar. What that does is it provides a really unique ambiance. It's the end grain of all these stacked logs exposed on the interior of each room. In 1994, a gentleman from Milwaukee bought the place kind of on a whim. He visualized it as a bed and breakfast and he started rehabbing the building toward that purpose and was added about two years when we came along. And uh, my wife Joan and I have been the innkeepers here since 1996. We have 400 feet of uh, waterfront here on the harbor. It's a lovely setting. A lot of our guests, especially in the summertime, of course, take advantage of that. This property was originally the Harbor Lights Motel. It was a 12-unit uh, roadside motel 
located on the north end of Ake Harbor. In 1990, my best friend, Jerry Plore, bought the Harbor Lights Motel and uh, reconfigured it into the Ashbrook and the beautiful hotel it is today. The Ashbrook is a 36-room boutique slash lifestyle hotel. We cater to adults and then young adults 16 years of age and older. So we've got an indoor pool, whirlpool, there's a fitness room and sauna. Many of our rooms and suites have fireplaces and in-room in two-person whirlpools. The gazebo on the property, it's been used extensively by our guests as a, as a wonderful place to go sit in the afternoon and uh, enjoy a glass of wine or or just read a book or whatever. We have many, many wonderful return guests that come once, twice, even up to four times a year. We're open uh, seasonally from the beginning of May through the end of October, and then uh, we're open for the New Year's holiday. It had been the doctor's office for 40 years. In 1906, it was on this property, as well as Wilson's. And uh, before that, it was in the park. It was a, an office in the park. Uh, so it's an old historical building. We added on to it, kept the same feeling throughout all, and we have 16 guest rooms. It's a real Door County feeling. The inn is right in the center of, of Ephraim, and uh, Ephraim is a popular place because it's so pretty, the buildings are all white, it's built into a series of bluffs. The inn is on the first level of Ephraim, and you know, the water is so close. They will sit in our com common room, it's very quiet. Uh, they'll sit by the fireplace and read and they're in the center of the village, yet it's just uh, the privacy within the building is, is just kind of surprising and very, very nice. The fireplace matches the shutters. The, the details in the rooms um, match the, the feeling of the room. And it, it's not, what, a lot of people don't notice it, but you end up just feeling very comfortable. The people who were coming here really were liking the white gull as it was. Now that didn't mean they wanted it ramshackle or run down, but they didn't want it remodeled to the point where it didn't, it was just an old building with new rooms in it. So that's kind of how we began to realize the value. We have to not change what people have come to expect from us, but we also have to be aware of, of changes and trends. And so it's a, it's a pretty stimulating and challenging uh, business. Just meeting the people here makes it fun to come to work every day. We never feel like there's any hardship in coming to work or dealing with customers. It's a delight to go to a place where people come in the door in pretty good spirits. They're on vacation. When you, when you start chatting with people, it's always a pleasant experience. I think one of the things that can really help uh, set a classic in apart is their service. Uh, obviously they're gonna have, a, for the most part, I think a, a historic property, uh, a historic level to some extent for their property, but it's the service that I think they offer that, that some may consider classic. Uh, that warm smile when they check in, uh, amenities that go above and beyond. I think those are the sorts of, of things that, that I see setting a, you know, a, a classic in apart from, from its competition. Outdoor theater is a whole different beast and you learn how hard theater is but also how difficult and challenging and exciting um, outdoor theater is to produce and perform. Door Shakespeare first started as uh, a project that American Folklore Theater did and they were experiencing tremendous growth at the time and put Door Shakespeare on the shelf on hiatus. My wife and I, Suzanne Graff, approached the board and they had offered that if we can have a successful season they would turn the name over to us. So when the opportunity came in 1999 to start the company anew, we were thrilled. Door Shakespeare's at a really interesting place because this summer we have many, many new artists, designers, directors, and actors coming up for the season. This is their first impression ever. So my, my goal this year is to give them the best first impression so that they're all coming back next year as well. I think it's an interesting time too for a lot of maybe actors who acted with George Shakespeare, but now they're getting into directing. They're into new playwriting and kind of letting people de 
develop as professionals here as well. For the 2012 season, we're doing As You Like It. Um, as You Like It, we're setting this year um, under Norma Saldivar's direction. She's setting it in the 1920s. So we have a great cast. A lot from a lot of new actors from Milwaukee and Madison are coming up to join us this summer for the first time and having a blast so far rehearsing in the garden. And then Drew Braille is also directing complete works of William Shakespeare, abridged, revised, because it's a slightly different production. Um, this is backed by popular demand. We've done it a couple times before. It's a wonderful 90-minute romp through all of Shakespeare's plays, basically. And it's kind of a comedic improv approach to Shakespeare, so for people who might not be traditionalists with their poetry and love of heightened language, it's a really, really, really fun, family-friendly approach to the entire Shakespeare canon. And Ross Dippel, who is our interim artistic director, has done a beautiful job assembling this season and putting all this creative team together. Using that that vision and you know his artistic network has assembled a really, really great, fresh, creative team up here for the summer. So we're really excited to see a new twist. It was a real testament to the history of the company and to the reputation of the company that all of these varied artists from around the country were interested in coming to Door Shakespeare to direct. And at the top of the pile was Norma's name. And uh, at the bottom, just underneath Norma, was Drew's resume. And I've worked with both of them in the past, and they're both Wisconsin artists. So we we're very interested in bringing them up to Door County to, uh, to help to create this as a Wisconsin theater company. Dora Shakespeare does a wonderful job of not feeling that they have to translate or, you know, dumb anything down, but really the benefit of telling stories in a poetical, heightened language. It's a timeless language. It exists today, and so many movies and other plays are built off the structure of these stories, because they're stories about humanity, situations that we all go through with family, with love, with ambition and dreams and demise and jealousy. I mean, all of those themes are, are timeless. Families can come, grandparents bring their grandkids, and they share a 400-year-old story together in this beautiful setting. And they can leave having that shared experience and having that to remember and to talk about and to pursue further through either reading Shakespeare or going to see more Shakespeare plays, we hope. So Door Shakespeare, it's, it's a great family-friendly environment. You know, it's not no ratings on any of our plays because they're all appropriate for the family. And I think everyone can learn something no matter how old you are. Longer term, a little bit further down the road, I'm really hoping that Door Shakespeare can find a home not only just for you know the day-to-day -day operations of an office and um, costume storage, prop storage, but also a place where people can come and really learn about how we put up shows. Since we do classical theater and maybe some people are a little intimidated by that or they're not sure it's their cup of tea, if we have a space where there is a coffee shop and a bookshop with all the recommended reading for the show that's playing that night and photo exhibits or an art gallery based around the culture of the show that we're doing, they can really understand the play. There's also so much magic in Shakespeare. There's the, you know, the magical places it's set in, in Bohemia and the Forest of Arden and Midsummer Night's Dream. There's, there's magic and there's fun and there's fairies and there's puck and, I mean, it, it really it ranges from, yes, the histories of all the Henrys, the fourth, fifth, and sixth, but then you have lovers' quarrels and spats and, and romps through the woods, and you know, you have such a beautiful range in the canon of, of plays to work with and to produce. Um, and I'm so excited to produce more of them. You know, and the, the romance of it and the love and the, the family relationships, it's really, there's just something for everyone. Sister Bay is the year-round Northern Door community. Um, when people ask me what that means, I tell them we have dentist offices, attorneys, plumbers, electricians, in addition to a grocery store that's open year-round, as well as the restaurants and hotels and art galleries and shops that cater to the tourists. We're in the Sister Bay Park right now, and I spent an awful lot of time here in the 60s and early 70s. The village employed a park superintendent at the time. We took swim lessons here from that particular person. Uh, it was our park. 
The building that, that is now the post office was the fire department at that time. There wasn't any electronic paging. If someone had a fire, they called a, a particular number that rang in about 24 different homes. Uh, just up the road was Joe Henriksen's Texaco garage. A lot of us had our first job there. Behind me there was Christ's Red Owl. There was another grocery store just up the street, Happy Herman's with Keita Steebs and we'd always go there for candy because Keita would always give us a few extra pieces of candy for that nickel or dime that we had. There was also a, um, a furniture store here and Bundes had a, had a dock. So as, as kids you would graduate from, from this area of the park to this area of the park and then this area of the park and as you became a teen you finally graduated to be able to go to Bundes Dock and, and you wanted to get there because that's where all the good-looking girls were and their swimsuits and, and the older girls. I remember sitting at Al Johnson's as a fairly young man and they were talking about, um, could you believe it, waterfront had hit $100 a foot. I don't think you can find anything for a $1,000 a foot now. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, that boom period took place rather quickly, but there were an awful lot of decisions that were made at the coffee table at Al Johnson's. That's where the discussions took place. It was a different time. Sister Bay was just a great, great place to grow up in. Every summer in the 60s, they'd bring in lumber to the, to the lumber company. They'd stack the logs, probably 30 feet high, and we'd climb those logs and we'd dive into the water. As we graduated to the fall, we'd all congregate after the beach pretty much closed up at the school. On the evenings, we'd play ball, and then Bill Bastian, who in the Village View Motel, would come out and whistle. And he had this, this very loud whistle that he'd whistle with his fingers. And the first whistle meant everybody get ready, pick up your gear, and that type of thing. And when he whistled that second time, all of the village kids, and it was the Manns and the Sundstroms and the Jacobsons and the Burrusses and the Frickses, and you just see those kids head over the bluff. When Bill said it was time to go home, it wasn't just time for his three boys to go home, it was time for everybody to go home, and everybody did. We moved to what is now the domicile when I was about four years old. Behind us, that whole area that is now scanned and, and the scan development was orchards. It was cherry orchards and plum orchards and orchards uh, were also on top of the hill where the country walk shops are now and around the end of July the migrant workers would come in and so everyone that had fruit to pick brought in migrant workers and some of the camps, uh, the camp behind us for example was Mexican Americans. They came up from Texas and, and we grew up with these, these young people and the families Great people, we got, we got to know the children. Very hardworking people. It's an area of, and a, and a period in Door County that isn't talked about much, but it was just a very interesting time. This was our life. This was where we, where we lived and where we grew up. And now I think there's so much transportation with parents and their children to you know, all of Northern Door County that you've lost some of that community. The tourists, um, we didn't really think of this as a tourist area. I'm, I'm certain that it was. There was the National Geographic article in the 60s, A Kingdom So Delicious, and fruit started to leave us as an economic driver. And, um, you know, we started to concentrate on bringing tourists into our, our peninsula or onto our peninsula, and it, it's just built from there. Sister Bay has to find a way to continue to be a vibrant community. And I think the best way for us to do that is to target families with children, young active families with children, because they will be the next business owners um, or telecommuters, because the Sister Bay is working to improve its, its infrastructure and its technology. And they will keep the village alive because somebody's gotta, somebody has to cook at Al Johnson's and somebody has to make beds up at the Sister Bay Yacht Club. Otherwise, you know, why, would, why are people going to continue to come um, if there's nobody here to make their experience fun and energetic and a good time?
Thanks for joining us today. Remember to come back often to find out more about Door County's history, landscapes, businesses, and people. I'm Paul Renier for Door County Today. See you next time.